greetings, McDaniel College alumni, family, and friends. I'm Chuck Sullivan, class of 72, and the McDaniel College Alumni Council president. What a year it has been. Never in my lifetime did I think it, I would be kicking off our homecoming celebrations from my home. So welcome to the first in a series of events that I hope you will find very informative as we remotely celebrate our ties to the Hill. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out our series of Green Terror Talks featuring insights on the political climate, COVID research, and diversity on the Hill. We'll have experts from the beverage industry show us how to mix West on Route 140, our homecoming 2020 signature cocktail. And of course, we'll peek into the vault to look back fondly on memories of moments in our athletic history to round out the slate of events on Saturday. The entire schedule of events is available on the alumni website. We hope you'll join us. College has been extremely busy navigating the many challenges that this pandemic has brought, but the one common thread that's tried and true is the spirit, grit, and determination of Green Terror Nation. You are the very fabric of why McDaniel has stood strong on the Hill since 1867. You are the reason why our students work hard every day. You blaze the trails that they travel each and every day. You are inspiring. Our students are amazing. And together, we are fierce and proud. Green Terror proud. I encourage you to keep in touch with the Hill. The contact for our alumni engagement team can be found on the college's website. I challenge each one of you to reach out to a fellow Green Terror to say hello and reminisce about your time at our grand old college. Let them know how you're thinking of them during homecoming, even though you can't celebrate together in person. I wish you and your families good health and safety always. Green Terror regards. Now it's an honor to introduce President Roger Casey, who's going to offer us some insight on the landscape of higher education in today's world and the challenges our institutions are facing. Hi, Roger. Hi there, and welcome Green Terrors to our very first virtual homecoming. Something that I bet whether you graduated from Western Maryland or from McDaniel, you thought you might never see. Well, this is my final year as president. As many of you know, I announced my retirement a few weeks ago. So I promise you, this is not what I had in mind as a homecoming either. I thought we would all be together on the beautiful Rembert Field with uh, Gill Stadium in our background on a lovely fall day, getting a chance to be a part of the greatest tailgating tradition in America. But nonetheless, I hope you've uh, put some shrimp on the barbie, grabbed your hot dog, and sitting back with all of your Green Terror family to enjoy all the wonderful things that we have in store for you. There have been a lot of surprises in 2020, but I hope there's some positive ones over the next couple of days as you experience the McDaniel Virtual Homecoming. I also want to say thanks to all of you who've supported us this past year with our emergency fund as we have tried to help our students out since COVID hit our nation and our campus back in March. Thank you so much for all that you have been giving back to your alma mater. And I wanna say a special thanks to our brand new Director of Alumni Engagement, Heidi Regal, for all the work that she's put into this weekend, for the president of our Alumni Association. Thank you so much, Chuck. I really appreciate all the work of Chuck Sullivan and all of the other folks who serve on our alumni council, and also to our board chair, Otto Gunther. General Gunther is a fantastic leader for our college and a great alum, and he sends his regards today to all of you listening. Later on, you'll get a chance to hear from our provost, Dr. Julia Jaskin, and she'll tell you about the Return to the Hill Committee and all of the work that we have been doing to keep our campus safe in these extraordinary times. But I am amazingly thankful and very proud of the work that our faculty, our staff, and especially our students have been doing as we have literally over the past six months rebuilt the college to live and work in a coronavirus environment. 
Thank you, and I hope you and your families have been staying safe as well. In addition to being president at McDaniel, this past year I've been serving as the national chairman of the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities. This is the largest lobbying arm for independent higher education in Washington. And because of that position, I also sit on the board of the American Council of Education, ACE. The great thing about this experience this year, well, frankly, I thought it'd be a great year to have this job because of the presidential election. Little did I know, I would be spending so much time talking to all of our political and higher education leaders in Washington about ways that they can support higher ed in this very difficult time. I'm pleased that the CARES Act included $1.6 million in support for McDaniel, and we continue to work to try to get federal dollars to help us through this extraordinary time. When Julia talks, you'll understand what I mean about extraordinary. When you come to campus, you're gonna see tents everywhere, social distancing, our classrooms have been reduced in size, but the great news is we got through the first half of fall and we've only had 15 cases on campus. I know you, like me, think that's great when you read about other colleges dealing with hundreds of cases. Well, speaking of size, you might think that COVID impacted enrollment this year, and you would be right, but you might not be right about the direction it went. We just brought in the largest class in the history of the college. That's right, the largest first year class ever, and our enrollment finally broke that magic number of 1,800. It's also the most diverse class we've ever had. No single ethnic group has a majority in this class. It's less than 50% identified as white and slightly less than 50% identify as students of color. But it's not just about diversity. We've been working extraordinarily hard this year to focus on inclusion and equitability on our campus. We want to have an anti-racist environment, an environment where students of all backgrounds and all faiths can come together in a place where it's safe and they can learn and they can grow. And I am proud of all those people on our campus who have been working with me to try to create a McDaniel that we can be very, very proud of. We're especially proud of the external attention we've received this year through our rankings. For the second year in a row, U.S. News and World Report has named McDaniel the number one best value master's university in the North. We've also been listed in their top listings for undergraduate teaching and for social mobility. Also for the second year in a row, the Princeton Review, probably the most prestigious ranking of all colleges in America, has had us in their top list of American universities. And finally, we've been top ranked in Washington Monthly. I really like the Washington Monthly ranking because what they do is they look at the socioeconomic background of your students, and then they make a prediction based upon other students nationally of a similar background. They look at those students in relation to their persistence, their graduation rate, and also incomes when they graduate. McDaniel does extraordinarily well on this scale significantly outperforming what the national expectations would be for our students. But I'm not telling you something that you didn't already know from your own experience as an alum here. I'm sorry that it's hard to come back on campus with our restrictions, but when you get back on campus, one of the biggest changes you'll see is our brand new Raj Student Center. There's a special session where you can learn more about Raj. We've essentially doubled our space in what used to be the Decker Center. A lot more area for our students to be able to eat, hang out with their friends, and especially in the world of social distancing, uh, be able to interact in a safe way. I love our students. The last 10 years, one of the most important things about being president is the chance to get to spend time and learn from them. And of course, they grow up and become you. We've gotten some great attention again and some nice accolades for our students. Our women's soccer team won the ECAC tournament for the second year in a row. One of our volleyball players, Marlo Embry, was twice now named an Arthur Ashe Scholar, the top award for students of color uh, in the NCAA. 
This year, our students received three Gilman scholarships, one Fulbright, a Phi Beta Kappa Public Service Scholarship, an Amgen uh, Scholarship at Yale, and something I would have loved to have had when I was a student, a Star Trek internship with the TV show. We've launched nine new majors, and those majors are one of the large reasons why we have such great enrollment now. And of course, our alumni continue to be recognized for their outstanding achievements, whether in business, the legal profession, or once again having Teachers of the Year in multiple counties in Maryland. Congratulations to all of you. You make us very, very proud. And speaking of pride, one of our greatest accolades this year came from the Association of Governing Boards, who awarded our Board of Trustees with the Nason Award. This is the top award recognizing the best board of trustees at a small college in the country. I'm really proud of them. They're great partners and they support so much of our really important work that we do here on campus. I'll end by saying thanks again to you. Thanks for being with us this weekend. Thanks for all that you do to support your alma mater. Whether you connect to the McDaniel commitment and advise our students through internships or giving them career advice, or whether you contribute to the fund for McDaniel and give back financially to your institution, everything is deeply appreciated. You've made my last 10 years extraordinary. Robin and I thank you so much for the warmth with which you've received us. And I look forward to continuing to be a part of the Green Terra family as hopefully here, I'll be returning to the classroom, my great love, and get a chance to help create even more wonderful alumni like you are. Now I'd like to introduce the person who's been the architect of so many incredible achievements that we've had on campus in our academic program over the last several years, and the chief architect of our Return to the Hill program, keeping us safe in a coronavirus environment. And that is our provost. Dr. Julia Jaskin. Thank you, Roger. Now that you have heard the national context, I wanna provide an overview of McDaniel's response to COVID-19 and hopefully answer your questions about how McDaniel has been faring this semester with students on campus. Back in March, a coronavirus task force was formed and met regularly to respond to the dynamic and ever-changing COVID-19 situation. The task force closely monitored reports from local, regional, and national organizations and was in constant communication with other colleges and universities, as well as our Budapest campus, where we had students studying abroad. As you can imagine during this time, the task force was continuously making decisions in response to the evolving situation, and much of its work was focused on crisis level planning. Flexibility was key, as some of our decisions needed to be updated based on new information that we were receiving. For example, we initially made the decision to move all of our on-campus face-to-face instruction online for a two-week period following spring break, which was in line with decisions made by University System of Maryland and our regional peer institutions. But during our spring break week, it became apparent that we needed to stay online for the remainder of the spring semester. We not only moved all campus face-to-face -face instruction online, but also transitioned our faculty and staff to remote work, with the exception of over 100 staff who continued to perform essential critical infrastructure functions, such as physical plant and campus safety. Faculty were prepared thanks to their hard work and our instructional design and technology team. We were faced with a multitude of not easy but necessary decisions pertaining to athletics as well as study abroad, campus events, including commencement. But our campus community consistently demonstrated its resilience and flexibility. At the end of the spring semester, the Coronavirus Task Force was dissolved and the Return to the Hill or RTTH committee was established. We then started meeting regularly to develop plans for the fall. There were five subcommittees within the larger RTTH committee, each responsible for specific areas of oversight, academic, campus community health and safety, operations, communications and business continuity, the student residential experience, and off-campus and curricular engagements. A smaller subgroup of the larger RTTH group continues to meet to oversee pandemic operations this fall. 
Because of the proactive work of the RTTH, we were able to announce our fall 2020 reopening plans in mid-June. These key decisions continue to be finalized through the summer with the guidance of state and county health officials to ensure a healthy and safe residential academic experience. The academic subcommittee focused on academic calendar changes. We moved our start date for the semester to August 20th and had a six day staggered move in period for all students to ensure they could move in safely. We eliminated fall break and held classes on Labor Day. We also decided to conclude the semester at Thanksgiving. Additionally, we divided our undergraduate semester into two seven-week academic sessions, Session A and Session B, with students taking two courses per semester. Session A just successfully concluded last week. We also decided to offer three types of classes with the majority of the classes taught in a hybrid format, which is defined as a combination of online and in-person. Some classes were offered online only, and 5% of the classes were in a traditional in-person format. For our graduate students, the schedule remained unchanged since all graduate course instruction was already being offered online. The Health and Safety Committee worked on establishing policies to keep us safe. These included requiring facial coverings inside buildings and when social distancing could not be maintained outdoors. It also included having all students, faculty, and staff conduct daily symptom checks through our Great Campus Clear app. We committed to increasing the frequency of cleaning and sanitation throughout campus and nearly doubled the size of our housekeeping staff. We also worked to de-densify classrooms and other spaces throughout campus, moving thousands of pieces of furniture off campus so that we could reconfigure our spaces. In total, we invested over $2 million in health and safety preparations, such as new technology in our classrooms, plexiglass shields in our dining areas, and new outdoor spaces for students to safely gather and enjoy one another's company. We have been conducting weekly surveillance testing throughout the semester, and students have also uh, now, they also have access to telehealth services through a new partnership with LifeBridge Health. In addition, we have put in place isolation and quarantine guidelines. Our student residential committee focused on establishing new housing policies and restrictions related to COVID-19. All students who had indicated they planned to live on campus in the fall were required to confirm their housing preferences in July. We were pleased to invite nearly 1,200 students back on campus this fall. Once they arrived on campus, all residential students were asked to quarantine prior to move-in and were required to either supply a negative COVID test or be tested at move-in. Our Dean of Students also proactively met with student groups living off campus at the beginning of the semester to discuss the new rules in place. There have also been changes to our campus dining with many fewer students able to be in the dining facilities at one time due to physical distancing requirements. A new McDaniel online mobile app conveniently allows students to make a reservation to eat in Angler Dining Hall or order takeout from the new Hilltop Pub in the new Raj Student Center or in Casey's Corner. Student support and campus life has also continued. All offices remain open to students. This includes the Bursar's office, the Center for Experience and Opportunity, Financial Aid, Hoover Library, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Registrar, uh, Student Accessibility and Support Services, Student Engagement, and the Wellness Center. All of our offices can still be reached either through in-person meetings or through Zoom conference calls. We have also hosted socially distanced events and activities on campus, including showing movies on the football field, uh, which students really loved. Uh, we had an outdoor play recently put on by our theater arts department, um, also which was, was really pretty phenomenal. Uh, despite the Centennial Conference spending, uh, suspending all intercollegiate competition for our athletics teams this fall, practice opportunities are now available for the students. And we are still awaiting a decision on our spring athletic competitions. We've also looked to accommodate the financial aid needs of our students and families by making changes to our billing processes, including waiving the $75 enrollment fee for our five month payment plan and moving the final payment deadlines for students. Also in mid-June, we were able to begin a gradual reopening of our admissions office to prospective student visitors by appointment. 
admissions continues to offer both in-person and virtual visit options. We also made the decision to move forward with in-person McDaniel local orientation sessions starting in July, with online sessions available for those who preferred that option. McDaniel Local gave us the opportunity to welcome small groups of first year students to campus so students could get acquainted with their classmates and the new protocols in place. Over the summer, we were in regular communication with our campus community, including students and parents about our fall plans. Senior leadership hosted several Zoom conversations to answer questions about the fall, and these were very beneficial, I think, for students in their planning. As we welcome our campus back to the Hill, we launched our Community Safe McDaniel Strong campaign with signage, posters, and graphics installed throughout the campus to serve as a visual reminder of our shared responsibility in preventing the COVID-19 spread. We also instituted a pledge for our campus community to be able to demonstrate their commitment to the health and safety guidelines in place. During move-in, all students were given the opportunity to participate in our on-track challenge event that included fun giveaways for students to become familiar with our campaign. One of the critical features of our reopening plan included the development of a COVID-19 campus notification system with a green, yellow, or red color-coded status to inform the campus community of the success of our shared efforts in minimizing the spread of COVID-19. We also established a COVID-19 dashboard, which can be found on the McDaniel College website and is updated each weekday by 9 a.m. Throughout our surveillance testing efforts so far this semester, the Wellness Center has administered over 2,000 tests to the campus community. While other colleges and universities decided to remain exclusively online this semester, McDaniel's careful preparation and the unique qualities of our dedicated, caring, and supportive staff has, have enabled us to continue the residential experience and in-person class experience for students. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, we welcomed our largest incoming first year class in the college's history, and almost 85% of those students opted to live on campus this fall. We are proud of the way our campus community has come together to embrace its shared responsibility and protecting the health and safety of one another. Our community has done a great job following the health and safety measures in place, and we recognize that it is because of everyone doing their part that we've been able to remain on campus. Looking ahead, we have already communicated our plans for Jan term and the spring semester so that students and parents could plan accordingly. Jan term will be offered online only. No domestic or international study abroad trips will be available, but students can still participate in internships and independent study options, assuming proper health and safety protocols are in place. For the spring semester, undergraduate classes will begin later than usual on February 1st, and we are eliminating spring break to reduce the need for unnecessary travel. We will continue to offer three types of classes, with the majority of classes once again being offered in a hybrid format. Unlike the fall, we feel like it is now safe to return to a single 15-week semester. Unfortunately, students will not have the option to study in Budapest this spring, but we hope to be able to offer this opportunity as soon as we are able. We are also requiring all residential students to receive a flu shot and provide documentation of a negative COVID-19 test before returning to campus for the spring. We continue to base our decisions on guidance from state and county health officials, and our return to the Hill webpage can be accessed uh, to find the most up-to-date information at mcdaniel.edu slash rtth. Although this has been a challenging time for all of us in the McDaniel community, I am incredibly proud of the way our community has come together. Thank you for joining us for our homecoming from home virtual events. We miss you on the Hill, but we are so glad you have the chance to join us virtually. Next, you'll be hearing from some of our students who will share what it has been like to live and learn here on the Hill this semester. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Murphy. I am the president of Student Alumni Council this year. Um, I'm also the president of our Biology Honor Society on campus and involved with some other organizations like the Pre-Health Club and the Chemistry Honor Society. Um, ever since last semester when we got sent home for COVID, it's definitely been a pretty big change 
Um, we all have obviously missed seeing our friends and I know I'm very grateful that we got to be able to come back to the hill um, and spend time with our roommates and see people, you know, as we're passing them by on campus. Um, online learning has definitely been an interesting transition as a lot of you probably know. Um, but overall, I'm just really thankful that the McDaniel community is so tight knit because if we wouldn't have had this strong backbone, I think that students would have been struggling a lot more with the transition to online. So we've been able to keep up through social media. I know the organization presence on social media like Instagram and Twitter, Facebook has been really, really good. So there's a silver lining in everything. And I am thankful that McDaniel has given me an opportunity to connect online with a lot more organizations and a lot of other students as well. Hi everyone, my name is Amara Foster. I am a senior and I am the president of SGA. Um, I'm an elementary education major. And here on campus, I am also a member of the McDaniel Cheer Team and also a member of Black Student Union. So of course this transition has been crazy and surreal. Um, it's, very, it's a very unique experience and the way last semester ended, it honestly felt like a movie, but I feel like we did a great job of pushing through. And I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to come back on campus because we know a lot of schools do not have the opportunity. So I'm just glad to be back here. Um, even though we have some online classes, I'm still grateful for the opportunity to have some in-person classes as well and still be able to connect with my school community and my peers. So, so far, so good. I think we're all kind of slowly finding our way of adjusting through these different changes and finding out what works best for us because um, we obviously have to work through these changes. So it's just been a great experience to try to figure out how we can work through it and still be able to be here on campus and still try to have some type of community, some type of experience. So. Thank you for sharing your point of view as well, Amara. Um, we'd now like to introduce Vicki Schaefer, who is our Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Vicki Schaefer, Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Our role in advancement is to build lifelong relationships with students, alumni, parents, and friends to advance the mission of the college. We are the fundraisers. We're the arm of the college that supports new construction and renovations that help us attract and retain students. We raise funds for scholarships, technology, internships, research, and study abroad. In essence, we make sure that every step of a student's journey on the Hill is supported by alumni and friends who care about McDaniel and care about the student's success. Our donors support the college in so many ways. Some establish endowed funds and scholarships that live on in perpetuity. Other donors support specific programs and projects like academic departments, athletics, or capital projects like our newly renovated Raj Student Center. And the vast majority give where funding is needed most by supporting the Fund for McDaniel. The Fund for McDaniel gives the college the ability to be reactive and flexible to support areas of critical needs. This includes many things like experience-based learning as promised by the McDaniel commitment, technology, and of course, financial aid. Most recently, the Fund for McDaniel helped the college respond to needs related to COVID-19 to help keep our students safe. This includes PPE, signage, plexiglass, and technology needed for hybrid learning. When the college closed in March, our team decided to take a break from fundraising to show our respect to those who support us and what they might be going through during the pandemic. Instead, our team focused on checking in on the health and well being of our donor family. We called hundreds of alumni and friends just to say hello. And time and time again, they ask, How can we help? In response, we established the Emergency Relief Fund through the Fund for McDaniel. There was an immediate outpouring of support and $114,000 was raised for student technology needs and financial assistance. This included purchasing hotspots for students who were unable to connect to the internet to join their classes. Looking beyond COVID-19, there will always be times when our students need a little extra financial help. Going forward, the Emergency Relief Fund will be used to supplement student needs over and above their financial aid packages 
and for technology, books, and travel expenses. Overall, despite all the challenges that COVID-19 brought, our donor family generously, very generously, gave more than a million dollars between March 15th and May 31st. An incredible testament to their love and loyalty to McDaniel. Alumni and friends who give back to McDaniel touch every aspect of a student's time on the Hill. They give in different ways, they give in different amounts, and they support different funds. But each one of them reminds our students that they are never alone as they navigate their time on the Hill. Thank you to all who give back to McDaniel and our students. And now, I am very proud to welcome McDaniel College's Student Alumni Council for a Green Terror Tradition, one you'll all recognize, the memorial bell ringing. Thanks again and take care. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this important recognition of our alumni who have recently passed. My name is Caitlin Murphy and I am the President of Student Alumni Council, also known as SAC. As keepers of our college tradition, our SAC brings the Old Main Bell in memory of recently passed alumni twice each year, during homecoming in the fall and during Golden Reunion weekend in the spring. We have been upholding this tradition for more than six years and are honored to continue it today. Today we are honoring nine decades of alumni. Members of the SAC Executive Board will join me in ringing the bell and each slide is shown. After all the names are shown, we will have a moment of silence to honor all of those who have passed. Thank you.
please now join us for a moment of silence to honor these alumni. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon in recognition of our alumni. It's important that we honor their legacy as we build ours here at McDaniel.